You know, it's wild to think that ocean temperatures thousands of miles away can impact the weather trends here in the Pacific Northwest, but they can and often do. Now, as meteorologists, we commonly talk about El Nino, but it's actually only half. El Nino is only half of a climate oscillation pattern that uh, has big impacts on the weather that we can see season to season. The other half being La Nina. And what this is, is a climate pattern alternating between warmer than normal and cooler than normal equatorial Pacific waters. Uh, so over the equatorial Pacific, alternating between warmer and cooler than normal. And they tend to do this every two to seven years, although there's no set schedule. You could have multiple years in an El Nino, and then only one year in a La Nina, and then go back to El Nino. There is a lot of variability here. So let's talk about how those water temperatures could impact the weather that we see. And we'll start with kind of a conceptual model here. In orange, just consider this a warmer than normal area of water. You can understand that water is naturally warm and cool depending on the time of year at a specific location. Plus, they're constantly moving. There are ocean currents as well. So this is our warmer than normal pool of water along the equatorial Pacific. So we have Mexico here and then South America. Now the normal scenario is for trade winds, low level winds near the equator to go east to west. Now why this is important, it tends to drive those warmer waters farther west as well. Think of it as warmer waters being less dense, hence that's why they kind of sit at the top of the ocean surface with cooler waters below. So you get kind of a piling up, so to speak, with those trade winds of those warmer waters farther west. Now, during an El Nino, you may actually see the winds relax, those trade winds weaken or even reverse. This sets the stage for that warmer than normal pool of water to kind of migrate the opposite direction toward the coast of South America. Now, modern scientists are not the first people to realize that this had happened on occasion. Uh, fishermen had actually realized this long ago, and they noted the arrival of these warmer waters during Christmas time occasionally, so they called this warming El Nino, Spanish for the child or the Christ child, uh, again, with the arrival coming right around Christmas time, and a note that with warmer than normal waters, Fishing production just wasn't as good. Now think of this warmer than normal pool of water here. Again, very large area in the Pacific, warming the column of air above it, warming the atmosphere. And think of what often drives the weather, warm equator weather moving both toward the north and south poles. And because the Earth is spinning, we have the Coriolis force, and that drives that uh, motion to the right, to the east, and that's where jet streams come from. Jet streams often serve as a focus for storm tracks and also a separation port point between cooler air to the north and warmer air to the south. So the position of those jet, those jet streams can have a big impact in the weather that we see from season to season. So a warming pool of water like this can impact the location of the jet stream and that can make a big difference in the weather that you see, especially during the winter times. So during an El Nino winter, when we have that warm pool of water, this can create a more vigorous Pacific jet stream or a subtropical jet stream farther to the south, setting the stage for the potential, an opportunity for more storms to ride across the southern U.S. It could mean more rains for Southern California, Texas, or even the Florida Peninsula, again, especially during the winter time. Also, with a different or separated polar jet farther to the north, that could set the stage for a warmer than normal winter in the northern U.S., including the Pacific Northwest. Now, also, even though I just said that uh, the impacts of El Nino are commonly a little bit more substantial during the wintertime, El Ninos have been linked to heat waves as well. So what about La Nina? Let's talk about kind of the opposite end of the pendulum swinging when we typically have our warm pool of water and the trade winds driving it farther to the west, as you can see here. Now, instead of weakening those trade winds, let's make them stronger, which will happen on occasion as well. So really, the uh, driving force between El Nino and La Nina can be uh, basically brought down to those winds, uh, stronger west wind or a weaker west wind 
possibly even changing direction. But with that strong, uh, stronger west wind, instead of getting the warm pool of water over the equatorial Pacific, we now get a cooler than normal pool of water over the equatorial Pacific. This is because, again, shifting those warm waters farther west, this sets the stage for upwelling to take its place. Cooler waters from below bringing in cooler waters to the surface. This also can impact the location or the predominant placement of the jet stream, especially into wintertime, the Pacific jet farther north, with this being the storm, uh, the primary storm uh, path, that could set the stage for a wetter wintertime over the Pacific Northwest down into Northern California. Now merging with the Arctic jet, also a possibility for colder weather. So how does that set the stage during a La Nina for a winter? Well, one of the possibilities would be an increase in mountain snow, which could make skiers happy, but realize that in the spring, a lot of this mountain snow has to wet, melt. And that during a La Nina winter, that could increase our chances for river flooding. Uh, in lowland areas around, say, Seattle, even down toward Portland, this could mean cooler than normal conditions and more rain during the winter time as well. Now it's also important to realize that even though a cooler, wetter weather pattern during the winter time during a La Nina winter is a possibility, there are many other factors that come into play as well. And one more side note uh, with, it's not just the weather that can be impacted by a La Nina or an El Nino, but there can be snowballing impacts like not only river flooding, but fisheries can see a uh, change in fish population because of the different weather patterns. And we could see an increase or decrease in drought and wildfire, wildfire uh, potential as well. For now, this is just one of the ways we can do long-term forecasting, one of the impacts. There are many other uh, impacts to what kind of weather you will see on a day-to-day -day basis. So we'll look forward to this winter in the Pacific Northwest, and we'll be watching for whatever comes our way. Reporting from Como4 News, I'm meteorologist George Waldenberger.